Welcome to Gyan Talk. If you have been little aware of what's happening around Gangtok in terms of the Sikkim Government College, uh, you would perhaps notice that this college has suddenly become um, kind of very visible in public domain. Uh, people are talking about it. Of course, one of the reasons is that it's got a new name recently. Uh, it's no longer called Sikkim Government College. It's called uh, Narbadur Bandari Degree College, but that's not what I'm talking about. I'm talking about the NIRF ranking that this college got recently. It's now one of the top 200s. Uh, its actual ranking is 190 out of over 12,000 colleges across the country. And also NAC accreditation. Uh, this has been accredited with uh, grade B and we are very closely uh, following those uh, with the grade B, uh, sorry, grade A. So we're nearly there. And of course, the credit goes to the uh, entire team who worked, but I have invited one person who is actually very, very uh, pivotal to the entire process. Uh, she has been the, uh, she had been there in the hot seat as the principal of that college. She retired just about a few months ago and she is here with us, so we will be talking to her. Uh, also, we will quickly trace her journey as uh, how she began as a teacher in that college and then finally ended up uh, with the uh, role uh, of the principal. So please join me in welcoming Mrs. Lily Ale. Thank you, ma'am, so much for coming. Uh, first of all, congratulations for on completion of a very successful uh, journey, both as teacher in that college and then as the principal. Uh, yesterday, I was having a meal with one of your former associate professors in that college and I just asked one question. I'm going to interview uh, your former principal and I just want you to say one word about her leadership. And he's, he, he just said, great. She, has, she had been a great principal there. This is what he said. So, uh, of course, uh, simply saying that one one of your staff said that does not fully cover, uh, does not fully uh, you know give credit to what you've done. Uh, because you are a you have been a teacher, and I wanted to be systematic. I have written the questions down so that everything will be systematic. career. Uh, how would you describe your long career at Tadung Government College, Sikkim Government College, Tadung? I joined the college as a teacher in 1983, so it has been a long journey, very challenging, really long, yeah. very challenging, because as a teacher, I had to take good care of the students. At the time, when I started my career, I had worked in some other college in. Uh, Sam also. Okay. So there was a difference uh -huh. in the students, how they would absorb what I would teach. Mm. So I had to go to the basics mm. and teach. So it was challenging but rewarding because our students whom we have taught have done very well in life. And as principal, it was more challenging and more fruitful also. Right. Uh, we've got a three sections and I would be uh, you know, using my the second two sections, first, second and the third section talking about your uh, uh, role as the principal but just to so, uh, set the tone I just wanted to go back to your teaching days you also became the head of the department in geology department uh, how did that department evolve over the years are you happy with how it evolved at first when we when I started my career it was uh, the that time the college was located at Nam Nam it okay. was uh, in a housed in a rented building mm -hmm. There were very few students. We had about nine students. We had only past subjects. When we shifted to our own campus in 1985 at Tadun, then honors was introduced in 1986. Mm -hmm. Then the number of students increased. In the beginning, we had personal touch with the students. The department has evolved a lot. We got funds from Northeast Council also. Mm -hmm. We bought research instruments with that. Then recently, Department of Biotechnology, Government of India also has given us lots of funds and established a lab called biotech hub mm -hmm. so research is going on right. we had large number of teachers at the time when i was ahead we had eight teachers in the department 
now it has gone down of course so the students have done very well our students have secured first position under nbu also mm -hmm. north bengal university right. and first position under sikkim university also mm -hmm. so maybe we had good teachers right so laboratory equipment wise are you happy we are Yes, it is satisfactory, but we need more classroom teaching equipments right. even now because mm -hmm. the number of students have increased so much mm -hmm. and we have not been able to procure certain things like microscope as per the requirements of the mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. So we need the classroom teaching equipments to be, instruments to be upgraded. Right. And um, some people say that during those days, good old days, most of the teachers were the cream. You know, we got the cream from Darjeeling, from... Assam from Shillong and do you get nostalgic over those days when you know young lot of fresh from the university <laughs> professors uh, See I started my there. career at that time when we had teachers by, who had come there facing all in their competition at right. that time uh, it was open the mm -hmm. posts were appointments were open to all people mm -hmm. from all the, all over the country mm -hmm. so we had teachers coming from different universities and they brought their own inputs they had their own take in methodology right, of teaching right, right. so there was mixture and i grew up, grew up i can say i can i grew up with them because i joined college at a very young age mm. but now we have what to say inbred teachers right. all those have passed out from tadam college all those have started either in nbu or in sikkim university right. so, so that diversity is, is not no there, there. Is not. right and little wonder that most of your contemporaries uh, went on either becoming uh, professional in univers universities and some of you of course came in the administration and uh, some of them, uh, one of them is now uh, assist, uh, the, the officiating vice chancellor and so on and so forth and some of uh, them are retired. So I mean that was really a golden age as far as Tadam College history is concerned. Because one thing was we had uh, teachers coming from diverse uh, universities yeah. all over the country and we had fewer number of students we had personal touch with the students mm. we used to take care of the students but now as I said not only inbred the number of students have gone so much the connect between the teacher and the student personal is touch is no is longer not possible there. right uh, then finally now of course I want to fast forward and then come to the time when you became the principal. Were you, were you really prepared to then leave that college when, when the responsibility came? When, like if you are given responsibility, you get prepared. You have to prepare you se yourself to take the job. Did you feel the, the challenge about suddenly from one department to the entire college? I don't think so. I ever felt that it was such a huge task that I could not and do And you it. knew the college, in and out? Uh, I knew about this college. At first, I was appointed as principal of Renault College. Mm -hmm. So I worked there for a longer period, for mm -hmm. six years. Mm -hmm. And there, the atmosphere was very different. I had to get infrastructure started. You had to actually pioneer yes, the over there. And here, it was very different. When I joined college, the college had just was going through a very difficult time. Because you know there were some protests in 2014 and all that, so the college right. had a very negative atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And I knew the college, I knew my colleagues, so that was an advantage. And I had to change that negative atmosphere to positive. So it was very challenging, but it was very fulfilling. Also. Right. Uh, you talked about that neg negativity that was kind yes. of uh, all over the uh, college campus and. Uh, things getting politicized. Uh, when you first then became the principal of that college, what was the first thing you did to dispel that negativity? First thing I noticed was infrastructure facilities were there, but there was no maximum utilization of resources. There was a hostel. I first had to look into the students' grievances mm -hmm. because we have to listen to their woes to the difficulties they're right. facing. Right. So I had to improve the teaching learning atmosphere in the college. Mm -hmm. So be it hostel facilities, be it health center for the students, be it academic equipment for the students, be it resting place for the students. They didn't have a room, boys common room or girls common room. So all those things had to be established and started. 
and we took first my first priority was the students mm -hmm. and I told my teachers see this college has been established to cater to education of the students mm -hmm. not for us not to give us employment right. so give them priority and after that everything started changing uh, did you feel that there was actually a real disconnect between the college administration and the students when they were when they became suddenly agitated was it a I disconnect? feel I don't I was not there at the time when the when the protest happened when the mm. problem started I was in Renault so I don't know what had happened actually over there but I found that the students grievances were not addressed right. uh, so your college then got the uh, NAC accreditation and uh, that was a huge achievement and one of the parameters is student support yes which then means that you were able to garner that student support uh, how, how did it happen uh, student protesting in 2014 and suddenly in 2015 very, sorry 15 and yes. suddenly become no, no, 14 protest was yeah. in 14 and uh, as i said they had hostel problems they had health problems the boundary wall was porous everybody used to come in so all these things had to be addressed come the students needed to be taken care of properly and uh, moreover government had also provided good facilities for the students giving them free laptops mm -hmm. a good library the infrastructure that we have in Tadung college is excellent mm -hmm. whereas in other colleges not so right. so all those resources have to be utilized and when the students understand that your intentions are sincere you're doing good work for the college and for them directly mm -hmm. then they will surely give you support and students had student support means the support that we give them so that they can learn they have mm -hmm. a very good learning atmosphere right. that we were able to provide right. with the help of government right uh, so we hear that when students have grievances it's not without reason and it's very important for, for particularly those in the leadership uh, of the institutions to look deeper into their issues their grievances and when students trust you, when students feel secure in your leadership, there's no way why that camaraderie will not be restored, why that bond will not happen. So this, was, this has been a very interesting uh, conversation. We will continue with it. We'll take a very short break. Please stay tuned. Is your smile Reducing your confidence? Dental problems giving you sleepless nights? We are here to end your worries. At Dr. Smile, we provide world-class dentistry at your doorsteps. Equipped by advanced diagnostics and expert team of dental surgeons, we have treated over 20,000 patients in just six years. Your smile is precious, so trust Dr. Smile. Welcome to Gyan Talk. I'm in conversation with Mrs. Lily Ali, the former principal of Sikkim Government College, also known as Narvadur Bhandari Degree College, situated at Tadong. So we'll continue our conversation. Um, so one of the great achievements uh, has been the NAC accreditation, for which uh, I'm sure you've been congratulated and uh, I hope people have given you due credit. Uh, what did you do to get this as, as a leader of that college? As soon as I joined uh, the college as principal in 2015, my main goal, my main target was to get NAC accreditation. The college, because I knew funding from center would stop if we did not go for it. Right. And for 20 years, different principals had been trying for it and we had not been successful even I was a teacher at the time mm -hmm. so we were not able uh, to do it but uh, this time I involved all the teachers every departmental head to prepare everything right. because we have to prepare a big report regarding mm -hmm. the develop um, regarding the facilities available in the college right. so I had to inspire the students the teachers I met them class wise department wise and I had to request the department to provide me funds for this purpose mm -hmm. so it was a teamwork was it hard convincing your team 
sometimes but most of them i'm very fortunate that my staff we be teaching or not teaching they supported me fully mm -hmm. and it was very tough it was very challenging because even i did not have experience of going for nac accreditation mm -hmm. it was the first time for us so i had to take uh, go through materials and then we went for nac accreditation and we were lucky we were fortunate we got it within a year uh, how close are we to getting the grade a accreditation it involves a lot of hard work as nac assessor i have been sent to different colleges in india right. by nac and uh, i have seen to get a grade it involves i mean lot of upgradation has to be done for the college it involves really hard work mm -hmm. in every aspect we have to improve mm -hmm. so it won't be possible right now mm -hmm. we have to we work really hard for more than maybe 6 to 8 months which are the areas we need to work harder in every aspect mm -hmm. in every area be it student support be it teaching learning and evaluation be it upgradation of the library be it infrastructural facilities like ramps etc and there are many things that requires to be installed established in the college started right. in the college which we have not done right and then uh, another achievement has been the uh, nirf ranking uh, now kadong college is 190 uh, oh, out of over 12000 colleges how satisfied are you with this ranking as a first attempt at ranking i feel it's very good but we should try to improve it bring it in the top 100 then in the top 50 even mm -hmm. if we come to the top 50 i'll be very happy and uh, the nrf actually was uh, started by mhrd in 2016 so uh -huh. it's a very new thing wow so i mean we we haven't made several attempts it no, was no this was my first attempt we attempt uh, we uploaded our data in 2016 right see after going for nac accreditation we had many things in place in the college so it was easy for us to upload the data and we have this all india survey of higher education so the nodal officer of that uh, section also helped us a lot and so we went for it in 2016 but very few colleges are applied so they did not give ranking to any college only they released a list of top 100 colleges and our name our college was not included in that then we made second attempt in 2017 your retirement couldn't have happened at a worse time you know just when uh you were doing all this and getting the hang of how things work you had to say goodbye to the college do you have regrets i feel that see extension of service or reemployment depends upon the government right and uh, i felt at the time and i even talked to the concerned authorities and said just keep me for 8 months or maximum 1 year you don't have to keep me beyond that also mm -hmm. and i'll be able to get a grade for the college and also see that the i mean the college becomes upgraded to a university mm -hmm. let me do that and then leave the college but it was not to be right uh sometimes you don't know why it happens but maybe a few years down the line when we look back perhaps you'll know why it happened but having said that it's unfortunate that uh, you're no longer there but we, we and that's not to mean that the new leadership will not do this it's only to drive home the home the point that mrs lily ali uh could have given more to our uh, educational uh, fit on it anyway uh Th there's no point crying over the sp yes. split mill <laughs> but i hope you will still be available for consultancy if the government wants yes sure right uh now let's go back to your principal days uh one of the curses for any institution is groupism yes and particularly so uh in in a place of highly educated people because highly educated people are highly opinionated native people they have very strong opinions about things as the leader of that college how did you grapple with those issues if there was groupism there would be groupism in the college when i joined 
I never paid much attention to it. What I did was as soon as I joined, I formed more than around 17 committees in the college. Mm -hmm. For NAC accreditation, we had to do that okay. as per UGC guidelines. Right. And I mixed up the people. People having, besides teaching, having particular skills were put in one group. Whether they belong to different groups before I joined, mm -hmm. they were put in one group. I motivated them to work for the betterment of the college. Mm -hmm. So, And I was very fair in their dealings. And I was very transparent in financial dealings also. Mm -hmm. So maybe they understood my intentions that it was for the good of the college. So they never had this, as I was fair to them in everything, leave right. be whatever be it. Right. So they understood and they supported me wholeheartedly. There okay. was never group. <coughs> I just wanted one tip from you. When you received <coughs> this contradictory opinions or contrasting ideas and advices and suggestions, how did you handle those things? There would be contradiction because whenever I would convey my decisions or the department's decisions to them, uh, I, I used to have meetings regularly with my teaching staff and support staff also. What I felt was whatever decisions I had taken for the good of the college would be always supported by many. If there were some dissensions by some teachers, I would call them separately to my room, explain to them, listen to their woes and find solutions for whatever grievance they had. Mm -hmm. And so there was never such dissension as. Right. Earlier we were talking about student grievances and uh, we used to see a lot of those posts on the social media about, as you rightly pointed out, hostel facilities and approach roads to these mm -hmm. uh, hostels and stuff. And suddenly now there's complete silence on the part of the students. We don't see any uh, anything being posted, negative being posted on social media, I think uh, you have really addressed those issues. But are there other student grievances which still need to be addressed? There might be because uh, with time, I mean, uh, you have said When you retired, was there anything no, undone? No, when I retired, there was no such grievance mm -hmm. because their grievances are mainly with learning materials, mainly with seating facilities in the college during the off period where they would sit, they would be sitting on the staircase and we had girls common room, boys common room, benches installed in the college, then hostel facilities we made it very like home friendly, mm -hmm. friendly for the students, we had a mini library installed there, we bought books, I mean funds are there in the mm -hmm. college, right. it's not that funds are not there, mm -hmm. so you have to utilize those resources. So right. when all the grievances were addressed to at the time of my retirement, uh, they did not have any major grievance. Right. Students were uh, satisfied and that they were, silence was they indication were satisfied. of, yeah. right. Um, as far as physical infrastructure is concerned, what is it that the college needs right now? Right now we need ramps. We need ramps, we need labs, we need a science building and most importantly for the students, we have to engage the students in co-curricular activities, extracurricular activities, we need a playground. Mm -hmm. That is not there. What's proper wrong with play the playground that you the have? The playground that we have does not have seating arrangement, does ah. not have proper drainage system, there is no wall to support it, so it needs to be developed. Was anything being done? Earlier? Well, I had sent a proposal, maybe the infrastructure fund has come now, again okay. from RUSA. Uh -huh. I heard the two crores have come, maybe something will be done. Okay. And uh, RAMs where? RAMs because uh, we have a component called equity. So For the dis differently yes, abled? Differently abled also, gender equity also. For differently abled, we need a section in the library which caters to them, like mm -hmm. with hearing aids, mm -hmm. audio visual aids and we need ramps in all the buildings because nowadays that is a must to get UGC funds. So is anything being done towards that? I had, uh, before I retired in October, I got 14 lakhs sanctioned for this purpose okay. from the department. Mm -hmm. I don't know what is being done. Okay. I, seems and science building, started. what's wrong with the old science building? It's very small. Okay. The number of students have increased. We have PG mm -hmm. in science, mm -hmm. so we right. need in labs. Oh, okay. So these are, I think, the immediate or the urgent needs urgent. Of, the, uh, of the college. Okay, now let's talk a little bit about library. Uh, of course, library is a need, but do our children have that motivation, that inclination? I try to tell the teachers themselves to use the library, motivate the students. We have students coming to the library as we have procured 
lots of books for them. They do come, especially the PG students also come. So they are using the library. The students are now using the library. Mm -hmm. And uh, let, let's now talk a little bit about other negative uh, issues. Um, you talked about boundary becoming porous and which allowed you know people who did not belong to the college come into the college and perhaps some of them were throwing garbage and stuff mm -hmm. earlier and uh, sometimes there's a fear that some of these people maybe even this unwanted you know un anti-social elements may be entering into the college and uh, selling drugs that happened because when I joined, I noticed the boundary wall was there, but it was very porous, especially in three areas. And so, and I, I would see students from other universities, I won't name the university, mm -hmm. coming to our college, selling drugs, our students gathering in uh, temporary sheds that had been constructed for the laborers working there, and smoking pot. So we had a discipline committee. I would send the teachers to take rounds of the college, especially near the toilets. And I, and I also noticed what happened was four boys came with rods to beat up our students also mm -hmm. through one porous area, mm -hmm. through a gate. Mm -hmm. And then at night, one boy jumped into a girls' hostel roof, wow. into the terrace, and the warden had to chase him away with the help of the girls. So it was very essential that I had to get the department to fence the wall. Mm -hmm. So it caused me great lot of problem, but we could do it. Right. And you are very happy about yes, what happened. Yes, I'm very happy. At least the teachers, the students are safe now. The environment is secure and safe in the mm -hmm. college. Mm -hmm. Yeah, the entire uh, area is so badly designed that sometimes you feel sorry for those community, for that community, you know, who doesn't have that thoroughfare any longer. But on the other hand, as the principal, your priority would be the safety of your students. In fact, you live in the same community outside the college, you would have personally wanted yes. the thoroughfare. <laughs> it was very difficult for me because a particular area created more problems uh -huh. than the others. Mm -hmm. Others, they came to meet me and I could explain to them why it is being done because in a hilly area, you don't have ro accessibility to roads just in front of your house. Mm -hmm. Even I live in that area only, right. just above them, right. just above the college. So even I have to walk quite a distance to right. reach the main road. So others agreed, but that group would not, uh, with, they were not very amicable. So they have staircase, steps leading to the main road. It's mm. not that their road has been blocked. Mm. Only they cannot have cars coming to their doorstep. Mm. So I explained to them, it's very essential for the college, for the safety and security of the college, please allow us. And mm. it was done. Right. Now I think uh, people have kind of uh, understood yes. that it was needed. Okay, um, one final question in this section and then uh, we'll take a break. When you retired uh, last year, it was that last year, yes, right? Yes, 31st last year, yeah. uh, Apart from the uh, ranking grade, what was your other uh, priority that you would have wanted to continue with? Not only upgrading, I mean uh, getting NAC accreditation, upgrading it to A grade, that was my priority. While I was principal, my priority was to upgrade the laboratory, get mm -hmm. more research instruments, introduce PG in other science subjects also. Mm -hmm. So that was what you were dreaming about? Yes. Right, so presently, uh, what are the uh, departments that are having PG programs? We have two in science, physics and maths. Why I insisted on physics and maths was, our schools lack teachers in these two subjects. Right. Even now, as I have joined as member of TRB, I've noticed there are 146 vacant posts for GT, for graduate teachers. And the applicants, and the ones who got were only 15. Applicants are maybe not even 100. So we need teachers, so I introduced physics and maths. Mm. Then in humanities, I was asked by the department to have PG in humanities also. So we selected history, economics, and English. Mm. She was very busy running her college, but she was also keeping her eyes open to the employment opportunities uh, that was there, uh, that were there in the uh, teaching department, particularly in schools, uh, mathematics and physics. So that tells us a little bit about her vision. We'll continue to speak to her, but here we have to take a short break. Please don't go away.
नमस्कार दर्शक तब अगवाई याद भैस नाइमा टेलीजन ने प्रत्येक सप्ताह कार्यक्रम झलक पिकली प्रसारण करम झलक पिकली यो कार्यक्रम जिसमें हप्ताभरी का खबर समेट हमी राज्य स्तर का राष्ट्रीय स्तर का अंतरराष्ट्रीय स्तर का अभी मनोरंजन और खेल जगत का खबर देखा कर प्रत्येक शनिवार हेन नभूल अंग्रेजी समाचार पश्चात कार्यक्रम झलक पिकली Welcome back to Gyan Talk. I am in conversation with Mrs. Lily Ali, the former principal of Sikkim Government College, Tado. Um, one of the most important aspects of any educational institutes is children's discipline, student discipline. Uh, how happy, how satisfied are you as a principal when you retire? Were you as a How satisfied were you as a principal when you retired, in terms of student discipline in your college? In the college, most of the students are disciplined. There are only few stray cases where you find uh, students showing indiscipline. But I feel that if you listen to the grievances, I had formed committee, not only discipline committee, but to look after students' grievances also. I had formed a committee, and so the students could approach them. and we feel, feel that if you really look after their good give them priority in the college they will not be angry with right you. so how did your discipline committee work they would first of all at first i had to see that the students would not gather in groups and smoke pot that was most important for me mm. because that was the ailment the college was suffering from so this discipline committee would go to different areas the more or to say drug prone areas and bring the students to me who were taking drugs i would ask them to call their parents i would counsel the parents i would counsel the students and in severe cases i had to expel about 15 students also mm-hmm. during my whole tenure but then i understood that if you listen was to that them, historic <laughs> i think so. were there First cases time, of expulsion earlier um, there were only one or two cases maybe right. but here i i mean in 3 years time less than 3 years time i had to expel 15 students and i had to counsel the parents and the parents supported me but i had to tell them the parents were very happy with the decision that i was expelling them from college but i had to tell the parents also be more involved in your children's lives because it is either due to depression or peer pressure that they take all these uh, what to say abusive substances so discipline will be maintained if the teachers act as mentors to the students also what we did in a case of student discipline we got a notification guideline from ugc in 2017 that make teachers mentors for the students so i selected 30 40 students and kept them under a single teacher as mentor mm-hmm. so that the t- students could approach them the teacher not only discuss, to discuss academic problems but also their personal problems if we give personal touch to the students I think so there is no reason they cannot right. maintain this you know recently the united government kingdom the uk uh, sorry united kingdom uh, government the uk government has introduced mental health education in the school uh, which is based on the philosophy that students have mental issues uh, when we when we say mental it's not just you going out of your mind but there are so many other aspects of mental health children can't cope with tensions and family pressure pressure of academic success and so on do you think it's time for even india and sikkim also to start thinking along those lines we should we should do that and moreover i feel like we should appoint a psychologist also mm-hmm. in the college Ca- uh, counselor in the post of counselor mm-hmm. to counsel the students that is a must in our college but the counselor has to be both qualified and qualified. very committed he should have done uh, psychology right and in mental health right certainly this generation is exposed to a completely different social setup and they would definitely need professional mm-hmm. help uh, in that in that so field. appointment of psychologist in every college a counselor in mm-hmm. every college is a must right um Now let's talk a little bit about res- uh, res- research facilities in your college. Uh, that would be one of the parameters for grading. Uh, where are we in terms of research facilities? 
we are doing well but we need to do more in the college we have a research hub biotechnology hub as i said in department of zoology we have a microbiology lab in botany department we have a research lab in chemistry but it caters only to few students like those who want to do research it is not meant for the students as a whole mm -hmm. so i would like to have research labs in the college research centers in the college with high end equipments where on instruments where the students can also do small short research short term research mm -hmm. along with the teachers that mm -hmm. is very essential and as we have introduced pg we need research work to be done in physics what ranking did you get in uh, what grade did you get in or points in research we got 2.5 out of 4 okay 2.5 so slightly higher than the half halfway yes. mark right what were the areas you got for none no so they never the highest highest four. points were given they in never what give four highest was in infrastructure facilities there we got 3.00 then we got uh, in uh, student support and progression we got 3.0 then in um, uh, teaching learning we got 2.85 mm -hmm. then in leadership and governance also we got good grade mm -hmm. so four areas we did well other right. three areas not so well but the right. lowest was 2.5 right and so what kind of funding do you get as big red college uh, till now ugc has been giving us and nac has also given us nac will continue to give us mm. in infrastructure equity vocationalization because we introduced two vocational subjects in uh, com information technology and pharmaceutical chemistry because i had to look into the job prospects of the students right. also mm -hmm. because of pharma company so we'll continue getting funds even as b grade but slowly we need to have slowly or sooner we need to have we need to get a grade right and how much autonomy does the principal have in terms of the utilization of the fund we do not have so much uh, but uh, like because the funds are utilized by the department themselves only we can say that we need this much fund for this purpose that is sanctioned and utilized by the department the things are provided to us mm -hmm. so i had to how, how quickly does that happen it takes time mm -hmm. it takes time and then i had to request in two cases i had to request uh, the head of the department of hrd to give us allow us to buy equipments instruments online mm -hmm. in two cases and he agreed and we got very good quality instruments at cheap rate i feel that in yeah, colleges yeah why doesn't the department allow all the colleges to I buy so it is pain accounts online fred finance department that raises objections right. it is not the department per se yeah. so i feel that at least for purchase of books instruments and equipments college should be allowed to purchase them online mm -hmm. if the, it is online there is no chance of corruption mm -hmm. or any misuse of funds right so i have rec i had requested them i did it in two cases after that i don't know what will happen mine you did a lot of things <laughs> the things <laughs> Thank that you. that we wouldn't have even imagined that you did mine <sighs> so uh now i think we covered everything but I want to ask ask you some awkward questions. Uh soon I think our students will be bringing their own cars into the college compounds. Uh there was a time when students used to bring their motorbikes now I think they are upgrading themselves to uh small standard cars and maybe some of them will come in SUV and so on. What what should the college management do in that case? It is upon the new dispensation to think about Did it. you allow the cars to We had very few cars maybe 2 3 cars. Uh, now it depends upon the wisdom of the present dispensation what right. we want to do about it because the space inside the college for parking is not so big right. it's a hilly state so we need space for construction of more academic blocks also mm. when it's upgraded to university even now we need as i told you science department mm. so it should not be allowed right. but in what way we can maybe we can it let's depend uh, let's think Mm. I mean let's allow them to think of an right. idea to right. take care of it. And uh, cl cleanliness what is the situation oh, like? As when I joined the college it was really filthy. It was really really filthy. So what I had to do was motivate all the teachers, all the students, non-teaching staff do a massive cleanliness drive in the middle of the year. 
so we went for massive cleaning of the classrooms washing them with water we did not have water yeah i would like to thank our honorable minister shrimati tulsi devi rai ma'am i pers persisted with her to give us dedicated water supply line we had only domestic water supply oh. line so we got a dedicated water supply line through rusa funds and uh, the more i hear what you are saying the more i regret that you are no longer there <laughs> <laughs> wow then uh, in terms of beautification i'm not talking about government driven beautification projects i'm talking about uh, students driven or uh, teacher driven uh, beautification projects uh, isn't that college a beautiful area shouldn't there be you know plantation of trees yes. and gardening we do uh, we used to do that we did that in 2015 16 17 plantation drives during the as soon as the college reopened in july and i had also started a bot botanical garden we had fenced it inside oh, the college okay. campus mm -hmm. and i wanted to name it after mahendra pradhan i think so you remember him dr mm -hmm. mahendra pradhan yes, from yes, botany yes. because he oh yeah that would have been he, such I a mean, wonderful he, that, and i announced it also and i had given and i had also said let's take funds from alumni association we have a mm -hmm. fund mm -hmm. so let's spend it we would have to spend only 10000 maybe to prepare a gate and name mm -hmm. put his name over there mm -hmm. and i'd ask my teachers to continue the work even after i retire mm -hmm. i don't know what they've done oh okay, okay okay so we have a botanical garden i've asked them to plant medicinal plants and plants that they require for the practicals i don't know how far they have progressed a lot of government schools in sikkim are now you know starting this organic farming in a small way with the basic idea of or basic objective of uh, inculcating that organic habit in the children maybe college now can think about that as well uh, i had already applied to the department in 2017 at the beginning of 2017 to open bvoke in organic farming mm -hmm. involving all aspects of organic farming mm -hmm. maybe uh, storing them selling them planting organ for organic farming and then the department said that uh, like we don't have uh, funds for teacher appointment i said only we'll get guest faculties right. from agriculture department to do the teaching uh, but i don't think so they approved it I mean I just right. retired and so there is space for us to do that. This college is fortunate enough to have such a huge campus. area campus uh, also right in the heart of this city and uh, I wish and uh, I really really hope that this this beautiful space will be beautifully used in the years to come. Now one final question the college has been renamed after the former chief minister Sri Narbhadra Bhandari. Uh, degree college your personal thought about that it's very good gesture on the part of our honorable chief minister because a mm. uh, our former honorable minister uh, chief minister shrinar badur bhandari had established that college started that college mm -hmm. so it is very appropriate that it has been named after him right. it will always be remembered yeah and when he was still alive this proposal was here and he had uh, said no Maybe because he wanted it to be named after he passed away. Yeah, because that was his modesty yeah. as as a uh, as, yeah. as a great person. He did not want to be named after named, him when he was yeah. still alive. Yeah. So uh, when uh, this naming happened, where were you? <laughs> I was at my home. <laughs> okay. I was at my home in uh, Tadong only. Uh huh. And so you just celebrated the fact that yes. it's under his name. Yes, I read it in the newspapers the next the next day, right. and I congratulated the teachers also. I called right. some of them and congratulated them. Right. right. Yeah, uh, the late Sri Narbhadur Bhandari, who established that college when he was the chief minister, and perhaps this is one of the best uh, gestures to celebrate his legacy that he left behind, and. Uh, as we were talking to uh, madam we got to hear so many things that happened over the past few years and we will continue to hope that this college will continue to uh, amaze us continue to amaze the academic fraternity and the state and we sh we, will, we should never forget that this college is the premier educational institute in the state so we will now take leave of you all uh, before that let me thank madam for taking time to come and speak to us and we wish you all the best for your future endeavors 
and we will really hope to see you uh, playing a role in the uh, improvement of the higher education in the state. So we will come back next week with another person or maybe another set of guests. Till then, take care. Bye-bye.